And um, so when I was 12 years old, though, there was an old Southern Baptist revival that came to the church and they were amazing, right? They were talking about the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And I heard the gospel in a way I didn't ever remember hearing it from my old Methodist church. I don't even know how they let the Baptists in the door anyway, but um, it was a beautiful thing. And I remember 12 years old, just breaking down and sobbing, knowing that Jesus Christ, the creator of all things good, uh, you know, the saver, the lover of my soul, um, wanted a relationship with me. And so, you know, went to the altar and got the prayer and everything. And But what happened was that Baptist revival left the church and there was no follow up, mm. right? There was nobody that came alongside me and discipled me. Um, but I remember even then getting a taste of the grace of Jesus Christ. And I knew that Baptist revival was going to be in town one more day. And so I went to school the next day and I, I told everybody, I was like, y'all got to come to this Baptist revival because I heard about this this guy named Jesus in a way I've never heard about him before. And I brought friends with me the next night. And it's so funny to look back at it now and say, wow, God, God created me to be an evangelist even back then. Like that, that was my calling. And I was so excited, um, but they went away. The feeling went away. And oftentimes I think we base our relationship with Jesus on a feeling. And I didn't have anybody to come alongside me and say, well, even though that feeling is gone now, you know, now it's it's time to get to work and get some of the meat and potatoes and study your Bible and pray and, you know, and and go with the ups and downs in life. And so that's good. Yeah. So um, I remember looking back now, I, I know what it was. I had a God sized hole inside of me. Right. Um, I wanted to fill it with, you know, a father figure, which I think can be good in some regards if they're discipling you and, and, uh, you know, moving you towards a relationship with Jesus. But I didn't have that. So this God sized hole inside of me was hungry. So when I was a kid and I remember as early as kindergarten, I was the class clown, right? Like I, it, whether it was positive attention or negative attention, I was, you know, getting the attention of the class and the teacher. Yeah. And um, that happened all the way up until about fifth grade. And in fifth grade, I, um, I uh, tried alcohol for the first time and smoked uh, smoked weed for the first time. And I remember those two things, putting those in my body and saying, wow, this is what I've been looking for my whole life. Like I have finally arrived. Like I feel comfortable in my own skin. I, you know, don't feel like I've got to you know, put anything else inside me to make me feel whole. But yeah. so it started with that, you know, from the time I was 12 to all the way until 27. Um, mm -hmm. I was out there looking to fill a God sized hole that only God could fill. What I look back now and and know is I was searching for a I was using a chemical solution. Um for a spiritual problem, you know, it was a chemical solution for a spiritual problem. My spiritual problem was I didn't have Jesus living inside me, right? I wasn't, I wasn't growing with him. And so, um, this really started me off on a bad foot. I spent uh, about three years of my young life in and out of juvenile detention centers and the last one I was in, I went to a boys uh, like penitentiary for, you know, truancy and just like, you know, having marijuana on me at school and stuff. And so I spent a year there when I was 15 to 16 and I got my GED um, in December of 2001. And when I got out, I wanted to get as far away from my mom as I could because like I loved her, but I was searching for something else. Like I was so such in a hurry to grow up. And so um, we had been li living in Northwest Indiana and uh, I had my GED now. So I was like, Hey mom, I want to go to college in Chicago. And um, so went up to, to the college and actually uh, met a, a girl while I was up there and her, she had a roommate. They were looking for a roommate and my Christian mom let her 16 year old son move in with two females. We were like, we were like the real threes company. Um, and it, it was crazy. Um, but there I, I gained a daily, um, marijuana habit 
um, alcohol habit. And then um, that's when I discovered cocaine. And um, so 16 years old, I had a horrible cocaine habit and um, started getting paranoid from that. So I traveled all over. I went to LA and just like got in a car and went, left school, left my apartment um, and just was on a journey to try every drug I could try. When people ask me like, what was your drug of choice? I was like, well, I say, what do you get? What did you have? You yeah. know, I really feel like I was a garbage can. Yeah. Um, wow. And so I found myself um, in Phoenix, Arizona when I was uh, 19 years old. And um, that was, that was where I was like, I'm going to stay here because it's easy and it's cheap to get drugs because it's so close to the border. And so um, I spent the next several years of my life um, with a daily crystal meth habit. And um, then I discovered heroin one day, black tar heroin. And, uh, you know, I always, people always say, well, I wouldn't, I would never do that. And I say yet, right. You wouldn't do that yet. Um, because I said that I would never, I would never try the needle. Um, but somebody told me, Hey, you can eat heroin, right? So I started eating it. That took the fear off heroin. They said, you can snort it. Then they said, Hey, you can muscle it. You can, you can put it in your arm. And, you know, and I was like, well, that's not that bad. And so I started doing that. And then that took the fear off the needle. And before I knew it, I found myself yeah. um, shooting heroin in my veins. And that was where my life went really, really dark. Um, and so I uh, got a really bad uh, heroin and cocaine intravenous use habit and really suffered for a long time until I found myself at a point uh, where I was in Phoenix. And I said, I've got to get the heck away from this place. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I looked at a map and I was like, I don't want to go towards LA cause that's, you know, two hours away. So I looked on a map and saw Charleston, South Carolina. That was as far East as I could go. Mm -hmm. And the insanity of my thinking was I'm going to pick up everything that I have and I'm going to move to Charleston, South Carolina. And that's what I did because I was still under the assumption that I could change my geography and that I may be able to find a better life. But that was a lie because I couldn't run away from myself. Oh my and I couldn't God. run away from the spiritual brokenness inside yeah. of me, right? Can I you did relate? the same thing. Yep. I totally hear you. 